from, from the crowd. A question on space. For Americans of my vintage, which is uh, tragically older than, than your vintage, space was very romantic in the time when I was a kid and we were having a, you know, the race to the moon, and it's become routine, and, and you don't find uh, children seemingly excited in space. Why are you fascinated with space? Why should people care about it? Right. Um, well, I think part of the, the problem, the reason people aren't as excited about space is that we haven't been pushing the frontier as much. Um, and so you can, only, you can only watch the same movie so many times and it, before it gets a little boring. Um, and you know, in, in, the, in the 60s and early 70s, we were really pushing the frontier of, of human space flight. Um, and, uh, and, and obviously, that those land, landing on the moon is regarded as one of the greatest achievements of humanity, of, of arguably of life itself. Um, and, and even though only a handful of people went to the moon, vicariously, we all went there. Well, at least I wasn't alive at the time, so, but retrospectively. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and it, was, it was just one of those really inspiring things that I think make, made everyone glad to be uh, uh, you know, human. You know, it's like the things that we, we're, we don't, we're, they're, they're bad things, human ideas, and they're, they're good things, and, and this is one of the good things. Um, and I, I do think it's important that, that we have these inspiring things that uh, uh, make you glad to get up in the morning and, um, and, that, that, uh, and, and, and glad to be a member of the human race. Uh, and and, and we, need to, we need to push that, that, that frontier. Um, so, um, and, and I think uh, the, the great goal we should be trying to pursue is trying to make life, uh, li make, make life multi-planetary. Mm -hmm. So to, to establish a self-sustaining and, and growing uh, civilization on another planet, uh, Mars being the only realistic possibility. Um, and, uh, and I think that would just be one of the greatest things humanity could ever try to do. Um, you know, it, you know, life's been on Earth for 4 billion years. Yeah. Um, and it's been, it's been confined to Earth for 4, for four billion years. And, and so it, I, think, I think most people want a future where we're headed towards being a space-faring civilization. We're going out there exploring the stars. And, 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 and we want to be on a path to making true the things that we read in, in science fiction books and see in the, in the movies. And that, that's, a, that's, a, that's an exciting future. Uh, but a, a future where we are forever confined to Earth until some eventual extinction event is less inspiring. <laughs> you should be a journalist. This is how all our stories turn out. Uh, and how much of this, if, if the space part of your visions and collective visions goes as well as you expect, how much do you expect actually to see yourself? Setting aside any life extension experiments you may come up with, but, <laughs> right. but uh, what, what do you think is feasible in the next half century, in the next century? Um, well, I think, I actually think it's, I think, well, um, I, I don't want to get too, too far ahead of ourselves with SpaceX, but, but I, I, I think we uh, could potentially send someone to Mars uh, as soon as 10 years, and I'd be disappointed if it took us longer than 20. Um, but then, then going beyond that, what, what's important is not to, to sort of have a flags and footprints mission, but to develop the technologies that, that could allow people to move to Mars if they wanted to. Um, and I think that that threshold number for um, wh where people, where you'd, it would become kind of a self-sustaining reaction is around half a million dollars. So, so that's the, really the key question. Can you get it down to where the cost of moving to Mars plus enough to get going is equivalent to a middle-class house in California. 